Blessings, everyone. You can take your seats. This is a beautiful night for us to meditate, to reflect on God's love. Are you not grateful? Do you feel grateful for what you have done? It's just to consider these things is really important for each one of us so that we can get to experience the love, the depth of the love that God feels for each one of us, that he has demonstrated for each one of us. Before I start, I would like to show you a video. This video is a summary of a training we had last year in Costa Rica, uh, and it talks a little bit about this. And that testimony is a vehicle that God can use in advancing the kingdom of God specifically bringing people to Jesus. That's why it's so important to present the original gospel we will get the original results. The gospel does not make bad people a little better. It makes dead people alive. Normalmente uno aprende cosas como, como del librillo, pero cuando ya vas a la práctica de repente es diferente. Pero cuando el equipo lo transmitía, el hecho de qué es el Evangelio, eh, cuando lo hacían ver tan simple, cómo eh, predicarle a alguien, cómo testificarle a alguien, eh, eso marca el corazón de una persona. Y entonces rompe mi esquema de que tal vez he tenido por mucho tiempo pensando en que cómo le voy a hablar, qué tengo que decirle, eh, y es natural. I know that many of us at a certain point of our lives we have come to this point that we just really pray and we say, Lord, I love you. Lord, my heart belongs to you. I love you, God. And we sing it and we pray it. We just tell people that we love God. But when we go to just our daily lives, sometimes our reality says something different. 
That which you saw in that video is the result of an experience I had with the Lord in which he spoke to me, he dealt with my heart, and he showed me how he feels about people. I remember, that was last year, we were praying for a training that we had, and all of a sudden, I began to feel different. I began to cry, and I didn't understand what was happening to me. I'm like, why am I crying like this? And why do I feel this pain inside of me? Nothing is happening to me personally. Why do I feel like crying so profusely? And I couldn't stop crying, and all of a sudden I began to take my fist and hit my chest because the pain was so intense. And I'm like, Lord, what is this? What is it? Why, why does it hurt like this? What is going on inside of me? Because I could understand that that pain didn't belong to me. It was not something that originated from my own soul or anything. And I felt like that is God's heart for people that are lost. I felt, to me, it was incredible because I didn't know God felt that way. So sometimes we tend to think God is love, God fills our life with joy, and we just think that inside of God everything is just oh so white, so wonderful, so bright. But you know there is pain in the heart of God. And when I was going through that, I remember that all of a sudden I see the face of my father and my brother, and I felt like they had died. And I'm like, that pain that at some point I didn't understand what it was, all of a sudden I was crying because I thought my dad and my brother had died. I was convinced. And it hurt me so much and I began to scream. And I was like, no, no. Like when you're standing at the grave of someone, like in denial, in pain of a loved one that has gone. And I felt like the Lord told me, it's not them. It's my heart. Every time a person dies without me, I'm losing a beloved one. I'm losing a person that I love. And the way you love those people that you grew up with, the way you love those people that you spend your life with, that's the way I love everybody out there. I love them. They are my loved ones. They are my beloved ones. I have loved them. I made them. I made them and I love them. The Bible said that for God so loved the world. Sometimes we lose sight of this. When we see so much cruelty in this planet, we see so much horrible things that happen, we begin to take a position that we should not. And we begin to assess in our mind and say, this person probably does not deserve forgiveness. This person is in a different category. Let me tell you, there is no other category. God loves everyone, everyone, and the biggest demonstration of that is the cross. The cross, the cross. And I was like, why would God feel like this? He's the God of all the earth. He's the God that created everything. The cross is the best explanation for this. In the cross, Jesus gave everything. He emptied his whole life. Jesus, the Bible says that he's exalted above everything and everything and everyone. But he went to the lowest place. He became, he became sin. He didn't have sin. He became sin. And he put his life down for everyone. And he went to the lowest the king, imagine the king. You've never seen the king in his glory. You don't know how glorious Jesus is. You have not seen him. You have not seen him in his glory. You have not seen him unveiled. He is glorious above all. He is the king, the adored one. He is above all. And he became sin. He went to hell. He went to hell. He died. He gave his life. He humiliated. He humbled himself in such a way in the biggest expression of love. Because God loves. God loves. He loves human beings. And it's undeniable. His love is so great that he did not consider 
being himself God, he gave that nature and he came to this earth and he surrendered to his own creation to be mistreated in such a way that you have no idea. You did not see it. You were not there. You did not see what they did to him. You didn't see it, right? <laughs> Jesus did it out of love. And in his heart today, that heart that we say we love, oh, Jesus, we love you. Jesus, our life is yours. But we don't respond to the pain that is in that heart. We sometimes are indifferent. Not sometimes, most of the time. Indifferent to the pain of the heart of God. Indifferent to the pain of him losing his beloved ones. And we choose many times to do nothing, to say nothing. And how will they hear if no one, if no one preaches to them? How are they going to know? How are they going to know? Eternity is long. There is no way back from eternity and the Lord knows it. The Lord knows. The Lord knows the pain of someone that all of a sudden has lost their lives and faces the reality of death, the second death, the forever death death and many times the people that are going to end up there are the ones that we also love it's our friends it's our family it's our neighbor it's someone that we cross every single day we saw them we waved at them but we never spoke about what really matters we never there to open our mouths to talk about what really matters i want to tell you something let them choose what they're going to do with the gospel. Yes. Don't answer for them. Don't say, oh, they will not accept. How do you know? Yes. How do you know? You don't know the need that they have for me on the inside. Oh. You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Open your mouth and I will fill it. Open your mouth and I will fill it. I will give you the words. I will give you the words to speak. I am the one that deals with the heart. I just ask you to open your mouth and say something. Open your mouth and I'm going to give you the words. I'm going to give you the words. Trust in the Holy Spirit that's inside of you. Trust in the Holy Spirit that abides in you. Trust in the Holy Spirit. That's why he has been given so that you can be a witness. You can be a witness. You have everything you need inside of you. Everything you need is inside of you for the Holy Spirit of God abides in you. He abides in you. Sometimes as a church, we act as if the ones that are lost are not from our own kind. Human beings, the Lord wants the church to grow, to grow for the people of this earth. <laughs> to intercede for your own kind, your mothers, your fathers, your brothers, your sisters. Cry out to me for them. Cry out to me for them. Cry out for their salvation. <laughs> Groan. Groan. 
the question that the Holy Spirit is asking and posing us tonight is what I started out with tonight as we close out in worship. Whom shall we send and who will go for us? Only you can answer that question. Who will go on this assignment to let the world know that I love them? That their sins have already been paid for on the cross. That God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not counting men's trespasses against them. Because you cannot punish the same crime twice. It's the law of double jeopardy. You already punished Jesus for the sins of every sinner. The good news is if you accept the substitute, the sacrifice, you are free to go. And when we do that, the pain in the heart of God is alleviated. One more soul coming into the kingdom. One less going into eternity without Christ. I've seen a picture of my wife um, laying hands on people, anointing them with oil. If you are here and you say, I want a baptism of love, I want this love. I feel it, but I, I want it to, I want it to go deep in my spirit. It can be imparted to you. For those who have already received it from the Lord, I reckon that's awesome. Stay in that place. But if there's somebody that says, you know what, I want you to come into agreement with me. Then come forward. She's going to anoint you with oil. And God is going to impart his heart from the last to you.